Hi everyone and welcome back. This is the third part of my mini art journal series where I am playing with products by Art by Marlene and here is the little art journal that I made using dies from the same collection. At the end of this video you will find two links on the two other uh, videos that I have shared before where you can see how I made this little journal and how I made the pages that are included. I absolutely love the colorful backgrounds and now I'm ready to start sticking again for new pages. And let's take a look on what I have. This is the first page with a snail. Then I have the other one with the seahorse. Here I have two pages, the one with the boat which is one of my favorites and the lady. And I like to work on different backgrounds, I don't go uh, in order, just depends on uh, what focal point I have so that it stands out against the background. So this is the one with the lighthouse and at the back I have my flamingo. So up to now all the focal points in this little mini journal are cut out from booklets and here are the two booklets that I have been working with again and again and you will find them linked down below, they are back in stock if you want to grab those. Today I'm going to make some using these cutouts, some pages, but I'm also going to make pages using uh, stamps. So I have here a new collection by Art by Marlene and this is the Dutch collection. I will be using both of these stamps today for making different pages and I like to use on this size of an art journal any type of uh, stamp set that is made for card making. This is the perfect size for that and you can see how lovely these are going to fit on this size of pages. So if you are into card making I'm sure you already have lots and lots of stamps that you can work with on this type of art journal. And since I have them, I'm going to show you a few more products from this collection. So uh, Marlene has came up with uh, four different washi tapes in different designs and different sizes, as you can see. A lovely color combo, perfect for the Dutch collection. And um, they all come in a package. Now she has also came up with a newer journal. This is a ring bound journal with watercolor paper. The size is about 8 by 8, not exact. And uh, the pages are watercolor and very thick. The perfect quality by Art by Marlene that she has in all of your journals. This means that it takes uh, any type of medium really nicely. It's not going to bleed at the back. You can add way too much water and it's not going to warp the pages. Front and back covers are heavy and it features lovely designs by Art by Marlene. Leave me a comment down below if you want me to share projects in this size of art journal. So just because I have been working already in this little uh, mini art journal with uh, Art by Marlene style, I want all the pages to be cohesive, so that's why I will keep working with your designs. I have a few stamps from the previous collection as well as from the Dutch collection. I was planning to use these lovely uh, houses, but I'm going to keep it for another video. This is an absolute favorite stamp set. I'm also going to uh, use this uh, little girl, which is upside down. I think it's really fun. And I'm also going to incorporate in my pages some of the die cuts. So let's start with the first page. If you already seen the previous videos, you already know by now that I do have a process, so I have the backgrounds ready, but I always like to go with this stamp set that is full of doodles and do some stamping at the back. For this page I decided to go with black, just because I want this to show more. Usually I work with uh, archival ink that is pretty much the same color as the background, but I am trying to keep all the stamping towards the edges so that I make kind of a border. For this page I'm going to play with uh, die cuts from the booklet and I picked this one that has a lovely border all around. I'm going to try and recreate that at the edges. So I'm using my thin black marker there and just drawing some lines. Nothing is completely straight there. I just like to have wonky lines. Now I'm creating little squares and I'm going to color them every other one with white and then in between with black. This is going to recreate the little border that I have on my cutout, so everything looks as if they are part of the same page. Little details like that really make a difference and they bring all the elements together. With my white gel pen I'm just filling in some of the squares there, completely randomly, it looks really organic, just because I want to introduce even more white at my background. 
Now I'm happy with how my background is looking and I'm going to start putting together my focal points. So here I'm working with the die cuts from the booklet and um, I'm going to create something that looks like a dream catcher. So I am using the circle with a little lady at the top and then at the bottom I'm going to stick down some of the feathers. I like that they are different sizes and I picked ones that have different colors. Notice that I'm not sticking them down in a row, I just want to have this organic look where everything is uneven. I'm using a black pen and I will go all around the die cuts just to uh, help them stand out even more. Another way to help your focal points stand out is to add some shadow all around them. Maybe you can do that with watercolors or you can just run your black marker all around them before you stick them down. I will do this technique later on on the other pages. So I'm going to repeat the same process on uh, all around the feathers. And this is a marker that I'm using which is absolutely great. It works pretty much on every surface. But it doesn't dry really quickly so you have to be careful so that you don't smudge your uh, pages. Now as you can see I'm not being very neat. This is an art journal and nothing has to be perfect. With my white gel pen I'm going to draw some lines, so this is going to look as if the feathers are hanging from the Dreamcatcher or for the circle with the girl. I'm also going to draw some lines at the top of the feather so the string looks as if it is wrapped there and I'm also going to draw a little bow. One of the things that I always like to do when I finish a page is to add some highlights with my white gel pen. And uh, this is exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm adding some highlights on the feathers, on her hair, just really randomly without paying any attention or know where the light would fall. I just like the whimsical look that this uh, gives. Now I'm going to bring in my booklet with sentiments again from the same collection by Art by Marlene. This one is packed with motivational quotes and some of them are really hilarious and I like the fact that they come in different colors. You will find the same uh, quote in white, in craft and in black. So for this page I picked the one that says think happy thoughts. I like to cut it out in different um, pieces and stick them down. I'm going all around it with my uh, black pen. In the close-up photos you will see that I did use my white gel pen around those words as well. I'm going to put it back in so you can see how it looks. And here are some close-up photos on the first page for today. Most of the products that I'm working with today are back in stock at Joggles. You will find links down below. Keep in mind that Art by Marlene products sell out super quickly just because the designs are so unique and really happy and bright. If you like something, move quickly. I'm flipping through my little journal and this is the next empty space. So this is where I'm going to work with my stamp set. I'm going to bring it in and I will work with the upside down girl. She makes me really happy and puts a smile on my face. So all I'm going to do is to stamp with black ink on white cardstock. And I am using my misty here just to make sure that I stamp everything nicely, but this is not necessary of course. I'm going to take it out, I'm going to color it in and for that you can use any type of coloring medium that you like. It can be watercolors, it can be markers, it can be your pencils. I went with my alcohol markers here for a very quick coloring and I picked colors that are going to stand out against that pink background. I'm using my scissors and I'm going to cut it out. Take your time to cut it out and nothing is ever perfect. So if you run a black marker around the edges, you will see that it, it is going to cover up any mistakes. You will get rid of the black edge and it is going to stand out nicely when you place it on top of your background. For sticking down all my die cuts in these pages, I go with my Nouveau Deluxe glue just because when it dries, it's not going to show at all. It uh, goes completely transparent. I also picked one of the die cuts from the booklet, a little bird, and I'm going to place it on top of her feet. And I have also picked three of those leaves. These leaves come again from the die cut booklet. If you notice, I did some stamping, which I missed filming, I believe. So I used one of the doodle, doodle stamps, the one that has all those hearts in a row, and just stamped around to create a little border. So I place down the little leaves, I'm cutting out the excess paper. 
and I'm bringing in my white gel pen. I'm going to color in all the little hearts around the borders, wherever I have stamped those. From the doodle stamp set, this is probably my favorite of all the doodles, the row of those hearts. I keep using it again and again. And if you don't have this stamp set yet, I strongly suggest you grab it. It's absolutely amazing. It has tons of doodle designs that you will be grabbing again and again for your mixed media projects. So just like always, I'm adding my highlights here and there, again completely randomly. I absolutely love the whimsical look that it gives on my pages. As a quote, I went with a sticker that says do the unexpected. I think this fits my page perfectly. Again, I'm cutting it into different pieces and I'm going to stick it down and I will use my white and black marker to go all around them, just like I do with all the other pages. Again, notice that as I'm going around those stickers, I'm not being neat. I like to have uh, uh, strokes that are uneven and I'm also introducing white as well just to brighten it up a little bit more. So let me put this page back in my mini journal. And here is how it looks. So this page is a great example on how you can create your very own die cuts by using the stamps that you already have. But if you don't have enough time and you want to create a little page really quickly, then use the die cuts from the booklet which is what I'm going to do for the next page. So here I picked the house that has a balloon on top. I went through the different backgrounds to decide which one is going to complement my die cut better and I decided to go with the blue one. I'm running my black marker around the edges like I usually do and since I am doing this technique now, you will see that when I stick this die cut down, I will not go all around it with a black marker one more time. This is enough for this die cut to stand out. When I prepared this background, I did some stenciling as well as stamping, so I have lots of visual texture there. And this is going to be a super quick page since I don't have to do much. Most of the, of the job was done when I was creating the background. These type of pages and in this size are perfect when you want to be creative every day, but just for a few minutes, so you can easily put together something fun. For this page, I went with the quote that says, Craft is dreaming and creating in freedom. Again, I cut it out in uh, little pieces and stick it down. And now with my black pen, I am drawing some wonky lines. And I'm going to do that twice, just to create a little border there. And to add something extra on my page, since it was looking very plain. Now I'm going to bring in my white gel pen and I'm going to fill in the lines there and with my gel pen I'm also going to emphasize some of the patterns that I have created using the stencil at the background and I do that just because I want to introduce some more white on my background again I'm going around the words with black and white pens and just like always the finishing touch I'm going to add my white highlights and here are some close-up photos on this page. For the next two pages I'm going to use stamps from the new Dutch collection by Art by Marlene. And for the first one I'm going with the windmill. For the second one I decided to go with the houses, but I want to use the frame as well on another one of the pages. In another video of course. So I'm going to stamp the windmill and the tulips and these are going to be my focal points. You can color them with any coloring medium that you like. I went with my alcohol markers since I had them on my table. Lately I'm in love with my tree blends. I find them really quick and simple to work with. I don't have to go through the stash of my markers to find which colors match together. You have all three, mid, light and uh, dark in one barrel. So it's really easy to color everything. So anyway, I'm going to do some quick coloring here. I cut out both my designs with my scissors and now I'm going to place the windmill on top of different backgrounds to try and decide which one looks better. I decided to go with the blue one just because it looks like sky, but I want to have a hill where I can place my windmill on top. So I have one of those pages 
This is actually a leftover. I have many of those pages that I create from time to time so that I can make many of those booklets. And uh, I'm going to use this one to cut out some heels. But I thought that this was not green enough for me, so I'm going to spray some uh, green on top. And this is Dilution Spray, by the way, which is the exact same colors that I used to create this background in the first place. But I wanted that green more saturated. Now I'm going to bring in a darker um, spray, a darker green, so that I can have a, one heel which is light green and another one which is darker. I'm going to make sure that these are completely dry and then I'm going to bring in my scissors and cut out two heels, two slopes. I can then place one on top of the other. And since these pages are leftovers from using the same die, they have the exact same dimensions as my actual page, so everything is going to fit nicely and I even end up having those rounded edges. Now from the lighter green I'm going to cut out one more slope so that I can place it on top. And I'm going to chop it off a little bit more later on, but for now I'm going to do some stamping. I want to have a little bit of a border all around, so I'm picking this one with the three circles. I'm going to stamp that with black archival ink in different areas, mainly staying on the edges. For the middle I'm going to fold the page so I don't end up having stamping on the other page. And then I'm going to put everything together. I'm using again my Nouveau Deluxe glue. I'm going to stick the back first. This is going to be the heel at the far back. And then the front one. And check that when I place it down, this is where I realize it doesn't go all the way to the fold of the page. And that's why I'm going to make it smaller up to there. So that it looks better. At least in my eyes. The fact that the heels are not made out of the same color help them stand out one on top of the other. And before I stick everything down, I'm going to bring in my white gel pen and I'm going to add some color on those uh, stamped doodles. I'm not being very neat, I'm just adding a little bit of uh, white back there. Without being very careful, I just want to introduce a little bit of white on my background. This is something I always like to do. Mainly I do it by adding splashes, but I didn't want to add uh, to play with uh, splashes in this uh, book and I haven't done any splashes in any one of those pages. And just because I want to keep everything kind of matching, I decided to add white with my gel pen just like I did on the rest of the pages. So now I'm going to use my Nouveau Deluxe glue and stick my windmill down. I kind of like having elements sticking out of the pages. They give the illusion that there is something going on out out of this page and you just see a part of it. So this is why I'm cutting out a few of those wings. And now I'm going to stick down the tulips on the heel that the, it is at the front so it looks like I have a lovely scene there. You can stick clouds if you like. I'm going to leave it as it is and you will see that at the end I'm going to finish it off by sticking a few hearts. I'm adding my uh, white highlights. I did uh, separate those heels with uh, a black line using my pen. And now all I have to do is to pick up a quote. I'm bringing in the booklet again just like I did for every other page. And for this one I went with a sticker that says make the world a better place. Usually those stickers are quite big, so you can't really fit them on uh, such a small space. But when you cut it out in uh, smaller pieces, then you can easily fit it and follow the design. So when I placed the page back in uh, the booklet, I felt that something was missing. And that's why I went back and added a few hearts. The hearts are actually cutouts from one of the booklets. I am adding white highlights on those three hearts. And here are some close-up photos on this page. And let's move on to the last page for today. For this one I'm using the other stamp set, the one with the houses. And just because there are many details here, I'm going to directly stamp this on my page and I decided to go with this uh, orange and pink one. 
I'm using my Misty just because I want to make sure that I'm going to end up having a good impression. And although I'm going to cover it up later on, I just want to have all those little details that I won't be able to cut out. So from one house to the other, there are some uh, strings with clothes or with banners, which I'm not going to bother cutting out once I stamp it on white cardstock and color it in. That's why I want to have all that detail directly on top of my page. So I'm going to leave this aside and I'm going to bring in another piece of white cardstock. Do my stamping one more time. And then start coloring. Again, use any coloring medium that you like. I went with my alcohol markers since I had them on my table from the previous pages. Now, one thing you need to remember is when you are uh, deciding on which background you need to use. For example, I know I have pinks here. I'm going to go with yellows and blues and oranges maybe on top of the houses. So this way I know that everything I color is going to stand out against that background. Again, after coloring, I went ahead with my scissors to cut it out. And you can see that I don't bother with the details all around this design. I'm just going to cut out the main houses. In the same stamp set, there is also a sun and it has little hearts all around, which I'm not going to bother and cut out. That's why I stamped again all the details on my background directly, as well as on this white paper. I'm going to color in the uh, circle. And I'm just going to cut out just that. Before I put my little scene together, I'm doing some stamping again with one of the doodle stamps. I'm going around the edges and I like this one. This is a, another one of those uh, stamps from the doodle stamp set, which I use again and again. And now I have one left over from the previous page that I made, where I had uh, that uh, from for the heels. So I'm going to stick it down there. And then I'm going to place on top the houses, making sure that I align them perfectly. So you see, I do end up having all those details. And the blue house has some legs and it's standing on the legs. I think it's really adorable. So cute. I'm going to stick down the moon. And now I'm going to bring in my black and white gel pens and just start adding my doodling. On the stamp that I did for the borders, I end up having some lines, so I'm going on every other one and filling that uh, gap. Then there are these hearts all around the sun, which I'm going to fill in with my white gel pen again. And from one roof to the other, there are some banners, which again I'm going to fill in with white, as well as some clothes. Of course, here you can grab your very thin acrylic markers and color them in. If you want to have some color instead of white there. I'm also going to use black to define that heel even more. Just like always, I'm adding my highlights. And finally, for the quote, I went with the one that says, find beauty in the ordinary. Again, I cut it in pieces so that I can fit it nicely on my page. I'm going around it with a black pen and a white gel pen. And then I'm going to put it back in my booklet. Here are some close-up photos on the last page for today. Stay with me till the end as I'm going to share a quick flip through this little mini art journal so you can see all the pages together. Make sure to leave me a comment down below and let me know which one of all those pages is your favorite. Also let me know if you want to see more videos as I'm going through the rest of the pages. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.